Hey, what's up? Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project. In this video, I talked to Rob Atkinson and how he went from a, a corporate job to being location independent. And it's a, sort of a dramatic, scary story. He literally quit his job, had very little savings, had a small backup plan, which was work on niche sites. And I think if, if you know Rob at all, you know that it actually worked out really well for him. But we go deep in this conversation. We talk about why Rob and his wife chose Chiang Mai. On September 18th, 2014, Rob had a little mishap and his revenue from his niche site went from approximately 2,500 that he was expecting to zero. So he moved to Chiang Mai after he quit his job with no income. His plan changed quickly after that penalty. I actually got mixed up in, in it a little bit too. And we talk about that in the interview. And the reality is Rob was really close to failing. We actually talk about that a little bit, but he pulled off an amazing feat of, you know, starting a new site and, you know, making it work so he didn't have to get a job. Additionally, we talk about, you know, the value of networking and, you know, that's actually one of the benefits of being in Chiang Mai. So let's get over to the interview now. Hey, what's up? Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project, and I'm with my friend Rob here, and welcome. <laughs> hey, Doug. Glad to be here. So Rob's been on my channel on Niche Site Project and has been covered on the blog a few times. However, I know some people may be meeting Rob for the first time. So Rob, can you just give like a quick intro, about a minute or so, just who are you and what do you do? Sure. So prior to 2014, I was, you know, I graduated school. I'd been out in the workforce for about five years, had a pretty standard corporate career path, and started playing around with um, affiliate SEO, building websites, trying to make them make money on the side. Kind of got decent at it, quit my job, decided to take my wife and I abroad to Chiang Mai, Thailand, keep the costs down as we just kind of started to ramp up this business. And fast forward three years or so, and it's my full time gig. and. Yeah, that's my story. Cool. And just as a reference point for people, you know, who haven't seen any of your other videos, you're not just doing it as your full time job. It is far surpassed anything you probably could have made in your corporate job, right? I mean, you're doing well, right? Yeah, way, way, way better than earnings wise uh, what I was making. And we can kind of maybe touch on it, but not only the sites, what they can make monthly, but uh, we've worked on a project together. You can sell these sites. For pretty big payouts so there's that as well yeah cool and yeah just as a reference point and i i sometimes do a bad job mentioning this so like it takes a little while to to learn the ropes and stuff but with these amazon affiliate sites are our primary focus generally and you can make you know five ten fifteen thousand dollars per month right it's not easy but it's possible and then, you know, a couple years in with good focus and like very, you know, distinct goals, you can reach, you know, very high levels of income, far surpassing anything that like you and I could have done in our corporate careers just in general. I mean, it would yeah. be like 20 years ahead and <laughs> the, like the people that were directors in my sort of area, like I make more than them now. So it's <laughs> kind of strange, <laughs> very weird. So these are these are good sites and i just want to i want to give people a reference point so okay let's rewind to about 2014 and you had your corporate job and did you get laid off like how did you end up doing affiliate marketing right so it was just sort of in kind of the accounting finance area and my path was very kind of structured and i knew i don't know if you're familiar but like a controller in a company i was kind of going that direction and all right it pays okay but it's boring as shit like it's the same freaking work all the time and like i think i knew early on as a kid or as a teenager and early adult that i just can't do that even though i somehow decided to go long enough in that path so i started building sites and around the summer of 2014 i had a site making about three thousand dollars a month maybe 2500 and i was like you know what it's not enough to live in America, especially being uh, married, but let's move out to Chiang Mai. So gave my notice. And then by November of 2014, we were actually in Thailand 
starting our new journey. Crazy, crazy. We sort of connected in that transition period before you yeah. left. And I kind of remember um, thinking, that's crazy. Like he's, he's actually doing it. Like I think honestly in that point in time in 2014, I had still not read the four hour work week, but I knew, I mean, it's very four hour work week, like move to Chiang Mai. You got the you know, <laughs> ar geo arbitrage of, you know, the dollar, blah, blah, blah. So you actually did it. Now that's crazy. Why Chiang Mai? Well, hang on for a second. Sure. Back to like the, the 2014 decision at the time, if I think about what I was thinking the amount of money we had, like the situation, like that was really crazy. Like it really, really felt crazy. I felt like a stupid idiot. Like, but if I look at it now, it was like the best, you know, it was like, an, it feels like a no brainer now, but anyways, okay. Why Chiang Mai? Sure. Yeah. We had traveled there a year, about a year prior on vacation, purely vacation. We didn't even know people lived there. We kind of enjoyed the Thai way of life, the relaxed way of life. And then when we found out that this was like a hot spot for people starting out on their journey to build online businesses, to be location independent, with the costs as low as they were, it just it just seemed like a no brainer to kind of put yourself around people doing what you want to do. And where did you move from, by the way? So we were in the San Francisco Bay Area, not actually in San Francisco, but about 45 minutes east of the city. Okay. Cool. What, what town's that, by the way? Dublin, California. Okay. Okay. I, I'm vaguely familiar. Well, I'm, I Cleve like uh, craft beer, so I kind of there's so much. Hayward. Yeah, yeah. I know. I yeah, I know like a lot of the breweries in that area. So yeah. Um, interesting. Okay, so it made a lot of sense. You like you like Chiang Mai in general, and it just made sense to get out there. Now, when you moved. Mm -hmm. um, you alluded to like it being crazy. So can you, I mean, you don't have to give specific numbers, but like, did you have a lot of savings? Like, did you have a lot of revenue coming in? Like, were you, did you feel like, Hey, I'm going to crush this. So at first, uh, when I quit in September of 2014, so the day I quit, I had a site projecting to make 2,500, $3,000 a month, right? On September 18th, 2014 that site got tangled up in a mess and basically my income went to zero okay so we got married three days later wow and zero zero income so when we arrived in thailand we had zero income so savings wise i mean we basically we had a little bit of comfort level in chiang mai but it wasn't like we could just stay there for years i think we basically had it where six to 12 months. And if we weren't having like income coming in or any progress, we would have to come back and go get jobs. Nothing more motivating than that, huh? <laughs> you remember the early days we were in a mastermind? Like, yeah. I was going to say I got tangled up in the same stuff, but I didn't have as much skin in the game. Yeah. And, you know, I was like, ah, this is terrible, which is why I'm a big white hat outreach advocate at this point, because we have plenty of time. There was no need to get into a rush, but we, the, the mentors, the people we looked up to were basically doing all these like very, um, risky, mm -hmm. like SEO out, like it was just bad SEO, but nobody knew it at the time. And then the bottom dropped down and we all kind of got tangled up in it. Yep. So, wow. And, you know, that makes me think of a friend of mine, uh, Zoe Ariel on YouTube. And she's in, she's actually sort of in the minimalism and like travel, like vlog area. But she moved to Rome from Toronto and basically had like just enough to get going. And it's like, you could figure some stuff out if you have yeah. like high motivation and that's all you're working on. So if we, <laughs> I do remember that day specifically and yeah, within, if I recall, you were able to like start basically from scratch and within, I want to say like four months, you had surpassed that like 2,500 mark that you thought you had like projected before the sort of SEO penalty, right? Yeah, I think uh, if I remember, I think, February of 2015 was when the site earned about the same amount as before it got hit. So launched it in November, December, January. 
And that, yeah, the site was like four months old. So cool. Very, very interesting. Okay. Now getting out of the weeds of SEO and affiliate sites, let's talk about like working as a location independent entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. was there anything that like really surprised you about being location independent? Yeah. I mean, at the beginning, like obviously just working on your own schedule, having quit your job is kind of different. So I guess depending on your personality for me at the time, like having to make ends meet, I was super motivated, but I could also see how it could go the other way. You, the amount of freedom you have over there is just beyond words because for most people, I bet you, you live somewhat close to your parents or family. Like a lot of people do, right? Right. So they're gone. You don't have to ever really see them other than maybe a, a Skype call here and there, you know? So you have the ability, you, if you wanted to, you know, you could go out and drink and party with <laughs> friends if you wanted to. So I guess just the overwhelming amount of freedom of choice is pretty, that was the one thing that stuck out to me, st stood out to me, sorry. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah, I could see that being a little bit of an issue, especially in, in my head, and you correct me if I'm wrong, in my head, it's sort of like a 20s, early 30s crowd in Chiang Mai, but like, yeah. is that a, just, can you confirm or deny that? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. It, I would say, yeah, 20s for sure. Definitely a lot of 30s. And you even have like, you know, older, older people for sure. But yeah, the core is 20 to 40. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And it makes sense. I mean, when we think about like, you know, you were talking about the professional track you are on, there's like a, you know, a personal track where it's like you date people, you get married, you have kids, you buy a house, like there's that area. So a lot of people... I'm a few, I'm 38. I'm a few years older than you. And there's a lot of people who just like, they have a big house, a mortgage, a few cars, like they can't do this stuff because they've created, you know, it may be great for them, but they've created something with very little flexibility. So yep. interesting. Okay. As you were starting, were there any like specific people, influencers that you were looking up to and you were like, Hey, I, I need to go in that direction. Like that's sort of what I'm aiming at. Yeah. So, well, the people, okay. The, the, the three biggest people that I remember helping me along the way, you, you and me did some coaching sessions on basically getting over the hump on creating systems because at one point I was pretty decent at creating sites and I knew how to do everything. I just never understood the idea of, creating a system and having other people do it for you. So that was kind of a mental breakthrough there. One of my first early persons that I was looking up to was Quentin Hamp. And he was part of our uh, mastermind group before. And at the time, I saw kind of his numbers and he was doing an affiliate stuff. And it was huge motivation for getting started. And then the other person was Matt Diggity, who I believe you've had on your series and just kind of the way he talked about SEO and his philosophy kind of resonated with me. Ended up doing some coaching with him. And uh, yeah, so the, those are the three big ones for sure. Cool. And I, I think um, you're a genius, right? So you <laughs> you like got into a mastermind group with people that you were like looking up to and sort of like you were like, I could learn something from them. And then you also paid to get high-end coaching from someone who was like an expert in a specific area. So it's like you, you built, I guess, like the right network, like where you could work closely with people and, you know, have a mutual relationship of like everybody gets something out of it. Of course. I mean, you paid Matt, but you know, yeah. Matt's a good guy. So that's all good. How did I get in your guys's mastermind group? Cause I think that's like, I'm asking this question because for people who are starting out, right. They don't feel like they have much value to offer. And at the time, like Quentin was making this and I was just a sliver. You had your name out there on the blog. I emailed right. you as a nobody. Like, so how did I get in that group? <laughs> right. I think that is a very good question. I think um, you emailed me with like not a big ask. It was a good question. And you also let me know that you were getting things done on your own. I don't want to. I mean, honestly, I don't want to talk to people who aren't taking action and getting results on their own. If you get no results on your own, 
like you got to be able to figure out that part. And you were making, you know, I don't know what it was, several yeah. thousand a month from a site. And I was like, hey, he knows what he's talking about. Quentin mm. had connected with me, just emailing me or commenting on my blog. And we sort of had a couple calls and had a nice rapport. From my perspective, I thought like I was doing a good job pulling in smarter people than me because <laughs> I had a couple good sites at one point, but they were penalized. So at the time when I formed, I mean, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but like I sort of organized things. I'm a good facilitator of meetings because that's what I did for my job. So I'm like, I could schedule the meetings and usually take care of some of the admin stuff. And a lot of people are a little bit, they just don't want to schedule meetings, but I'm like, Hey, I'll schedule meetings. So is that kind of, you, yeah, you're, you're definitely really good at that. And like, okay, uh, I, I make yeah. mistakes and stuff, but yeah, it could usually schedule a meeting and get pretty close on the time zones. So at that point, like, I think I knew Quentin was doing really well and he was far ahead of both of us. I think you were doing well. I was trying to catch up and I was only, I only had like a year in the game at that point, right? I was really brand new, but I just happened to have started a blog and like somehow got myself out there. And you had a couple of years under your belt at that point. So yeah, it just happened to be the right group of people. And, you know, we had chatted a couple of times. So I think I knew we could at least have constructive conversations and all learn something from each other. So yeah, I think it was just like good timing and like non-aggressive networking. So a lot of people yeah. are they come in with an ask or, you know, people send me emails. I read every single one. And if you ask a bad question right away, you basically <laughs> can't recover. Sorry to say that, but like if you ask a question that you could have Googled, that's bad. Like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So do you have any tips for people reaching out just in general? I'm trying to think because I'm trying to go back. Like, I feel like I'm better at it now because I have sort of the experience. So that's my value add. But I think, like you said, don't ask stupid questions. Um, try to be creative. Try to give value first. Be creative, whatever that is. We all have different skill sets. So like whatever your job background is, your career background, like what can you bring to the table? And don't. Like I've had people message me on Facebook who have seen a couple of interviews or found my name or whatever. And the first thing I do is like, can you, can you check the on page for my site? I'm like, really? <laughs> like, that's the first thing you're going to ask me. Like, yeah, N not cool. Or, you know, again, just anything you can Google do that. Like definitely do that first. <laughs> so, okay. So people throw out the term location independent and other people use digital nomad. Is there like a distinction in your mind? Like, how do you describe yourself, by the way? Okay, so I would call myself location independent. The way that we travel, we always like, we, we like the ability to travel, right? So that's being location independent. But we like sort of having a home base. So if we are, say, we, have, we get a 12-month lease in Chiang Mai, we have a visa that allows us to live there for 12 months, like that's our home base. That's where we get the bulk of our work done and then from there we're in southeast asia if we want to go to vietnam or go to bali do these trips that's just extra the way i see digital nomad and i think it's a really hard lifestyle to actually follow through on is where you literally go somewhere for two weeks you're working and exploring you go to the next place and you're just perpetually traveling you don't really have like a home base really really difficult to, mm -hmm. I guess, grow and do like more interesting things. Uh, you know, again, referring back to the interview with uh, Matt Diggity, I'll link to it below, but you know, he made a really good point in that when you're traveling, like you want to be present in, you know, the city, the country that you're traveling to, you don't want to be distracted with thinking you have to check email. So at best you should be able to like maintain whatever you're doing if you have good systems and a good team in place, you may be able to check out for, you know, decent periods of time, but you're not going to be able to like grow your business while you're traveling. It's just, there's too many moving parts. And if you, I think if you do try and grow your business while, while you are traveling, you'll end up missing out on the experiences like in the place you're visiting. One more thing that you're absolutely right. One more thing I would add to that. Uh, in the summer of 2015, after we did Chiang Mai, we did 60 days in Bali. 
right? And there was a lot we wanted to see. So our typical work week would be about four days of just hardcore working and three days of being tourist. So I think, I think if you're going to make it like one or two months as how long you can stay, I think you can kind of bend it to your favor a little bit. But if you're less than a month, I just think, like you said, it's maintenance mode. Right, right, right. Very interesting. Okay, so any sort of tips for people that have a corporate job and they want to transition into you know, a location-independent position or maybe even relocate? Do you have any tips from your experience? And you, know, you probably observed a lot of people that made the, the transition as well. So what can you offer them to you know, make it easier or better? So this is, just to clarify, this is a person that has a corporate job right now and maybe they want to launch a similar business and go to Chiang Mai, something like that? Yeah, Chiang Mai or, yeah, you could make it specific to Chiang Mai, sure. Okay, so I think there, I've I've kind of read about this and there's two like kind of different personalities when we have the day job, right? There is someone who... They have the day job and they're able to really focus at night and push ahead and like launch this real business where it makes, I don't know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month, and then you feel comfortable enough to quit. We've seen it with other bloggers out there. They wait a long time. I had I could never do that. I knew that wasn't right for me. So if this if what I'm about to say speaks to you, then it's scary as hell. But I think what you have to do is you have to be serious in your craft, right? You have to know what you're doing and have a vision. But I think you're going to have to pull the plug sooner than you think. And that pressure of quitting is really going to accelerate your growth financially and everything else that's going to set you up for the next two or three years. So I personally, if you can do it, I recommend pulling that plug and taking the plunge because you might be hanging on to too many of your comforts of your day job that you don't realize you are. That's uh, that's good advice. And like, you know, on on the converse, right, for people that, you know, are super scared, you can, you know, do this in the evenings. It's going to take a little bit longer, probably. And that's fine. If, you know, some people are more risk averse, and the, the, the pressure of that would be like, debilitating. So uh, there's definitely like you said, there's two schools of uh, sort of employee. So very interesting. And I guess I, I loved it. I yeah. like as, as scary as it was, like I always I get kind of like jacked up on kind of deadlines and pressures and having to perform in that kind of situation. So for me it just it felt it was a rush, but it was scary, but it was fun. <laughs> right. And I think um I was I was talking to one of my friends earlier today, Ravi, who his interview will be out by the time this comes out. So I'll put a link below, but he worked at Microsoft. He was doing really, like, really well, and that's an understatement. And he quit his job. And you know, the thing is, one of the things that allowed him to do it, to have the confidence, was like, he can go get a job again. Like, mm-hmm. you can try things out, and maybe it's not like a failure, but maybe you do it and you decide, hey, I, actually, I kind of like working for the company. I just I was in the right. wrong position or something like that. So there's definitely flexibility to try things out and go back to what you were doing. You know, there's no harm in that. Can I add one more thing? Sure. So I've seen a, this as a common thing. So like if you have a day job where you're making what you think is comfortable money, whatever that may be, I have noticed a theme where like these kind of entrepreneurs, they kind of want to do it on the side, but they're literally so comfortable. Their job there's no real pain, right? They go Monday through Friday. They, they save money and all this stuff. So it's, it's really hard. If you're in that position, I don't, I didn't, I don't know what that position felt like. Um, I almost, I almost believe some of the most successful people I see kind of almost hit rock bottom. Um, and that sort of makes them push and do these crazy things. So make yourself feel uncomfortable if you, if you can. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) Very, very good advice. So that sort of concludes uh, my questions. Is there anything else you want to add, Rob, as like parting thoughts or anything for for anyone interested in the location-independent lifestyle? I think uh, just if you believe in yourself and kind of what you're doing and you know you take that leap, 
like you said, the worst the worst thing that could happen to you is you could go back and get a job. It's if you break it down, it's not the end of the world. Very good. Well, thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. And yeah, if people have questions or anything, need advice on their specific situation, leave a comment below. I know I'll get to them and I'll, you know, if I see questions that Rob should answer, I'll bug Rob and tell him to answer them as well. But uh, yeah, leave your comments below. And by the way, I, I will give a little plug. Rob has several other videos and areas in which he and I have, you know, discussed projects that we've worked on, actually all the coaching sessions that we did back in 2014 when Rob was moving from like, you know, sort of a, a new affiliate site uh, entrepreneur, right? Growing into like a <laughs> this a sort of affiliate site magnet. I, I don't know if that's the right, it's a little <laughs> aggressive, but you're doing well, right? So like all those coaching calls are on YouTube. So I'll put a link to the the playlist so people can check those out and see like the progression of like when we first got started through like the six or seven coaching calls. Cool. All right. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, Rob. See you, Doug. Thanks, Rob, for joining us today and looking forward to hearing your comments below. So let us know if you like these conversations with Rob and I. We could definitely do more of them. If you have any suggestions for topics, definitely put them in the comments below. So you could check out, you know, anywhere where we could follow Rob as well in the description. So I encourage you to check it out. Rob and his wife have a pretty cool travel blog. So have a look there. And we'll see you next time.